let's use it on Tybee, where it's time to trash talk. It's finding the single-use mats and It's a left-behind food for me. It's a left-behind plastic beach toy for me. It's the beach chair that ends up in the marsh for me. It's abandoning a bait bucket, fishing line, crab trap, other crab trap, at a waterway, creek, or salt marsh for me. It's the green free for me. Let's talk trash. Green debris. Like, what even is marine debris? NOAA, the National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration, quoted that marine debris is any persistent solid material that is manufactured or processed and is directly or indirectly, intentionally or even unintentionally, disposed of or abandoned into a marine environment. When we refer to marine environments, those are going to be places nearby the sea or even in the sea. How does marine debris end up in our oceans? Well, let's think about the water cycle. Where does all water end up? In our oceans. So just like water ended up in our oceans, debris can also end up in our oceans through the transportation of water. A few examples of marine debris may include wood, plastic, rubber, metal, and cotton. Trash talk. Let's talk about how marine debris breaks down. When we look at breaking down marine debris, it is breaking down in the ocean, not on land. And so with that, we kind of have different ways it breaks down. We look at biodegradation. That is where our marine debris is gonna break down by natural means, such as fungus, bacteria, or even invertebrates. We call those the FBI. And that's just a natural way, like such as apples or oranges, carver boxes, those things can mineralize and return their nutrients back into the ocean. Photodegradation. This is more specific towards plastic and things that are made up of chemicals that don't naturally mineralize and return back to the ocean or break down. The, this is helped by the sun. Photosynthesis, photo, that means sunlight. And so sunlight will break that down only into smaller and smaller pieces, but those pieces of plastic, which we know as microplastics, never go away. And last but not least, technically mechanical degradation. That's just where things are bumping against each other in the ocean forcing physical contact and will make those into smaller pieces and pieces of marine debris. Marine debris has a detrimental impact on all of our coastlines and our oceans. So exactly what are a few of the impacts we're dealing with? Just a few examples, of course there are many more, but examples would be economic loss, habitat damage, wildlife entanglement, as well as wildlife ingestion, navigation hazards, species transport, quality of life, and of course, many more. These are just to name a few. So let's talk about how long it takes for items to degrade in the ocean. We talk about degradation, we're talking about mechanical, photodegradation, and biodegradation. And any of these have different ways that they our first item is going to be our paper towel. It takes about two weeks to degrade. Apple core is going to take about two months, as well as a cardboard box. A cotton t-shirt, completely cotton, without any plastics or chemicals, it takes about four months. Wool socks, completely wool, it takes two years. We talk about cigarette butts, and even these still have the requirements of that are plastic. That may be up to ten years for a cigarette butt. When we look at tin cans, like soup cans, that's going to be about 50 years to degrade in the ocean. We're looking at aluminum cans, that's about 200 years to degrade. Again, degrading can be photo, physical, or even biodegradation. Disposable diapers, this is a crazy one. It is 450 years for it to degrade. Um, same with our plastic bags, 400. Plastic water bottles are 450. And fishing line. 600 years estimated in glass bottles, even though we think it's very commonly known as a natural resource with glass and the sand, it's undetermined and estimated up to a million years. 
keep in mind these are just estimations of items that can be great in the ocean, not on land. Whether you live by the coast or whether you live inland, I challenge you to find ways in our everyday lives to help lessen the impacts of waste and marine debris in our lives. Whether you're reducing, recycling, repurposing, or just rethinking about things that you come across every day, I challenge you to be creative and to find new ways, and together we can make an impact. All right, thanks again for joining us on this week's Tuesdays on Tybee. It's leaving only your footprints behind. That's the solutions for the sea.